So Moshe comes to Pharaoh with a message from God and says, the God of Israel says, let my people go so that they can serve me. Pharaoh says, who is this God that I should listen to him? And he refuses. Not only doesn't he let the people go, he increases the workload, making it practically humanly impossible to uh, produce the number of bricks that they're supposed to produce when they also have to gather the straw and the mud to make the bricks with. The Jewish taskmasters, the Jews who were appointed to make sure that the other Jews do their work, were horrified and they pointed fingers at Moshe and they said, you're killing us. So Moshe turns to God and says, Lama why did you make it worse for the people? Why did you send me? God's response is, you're questioning me? You're not like Avraham. The good old days are gone. <laughs> they don't make Jews the way they used to anymore. Avraham never questioned, and you're questioning? What did Avraham not question? God said to him, you're going to have grandchildren from Yitzchak. And before Yitzchak is married, God says, sacrifice him. Bring him as a sacrifice. Avraham could have questioned, how am I going to have grandchildren from him if I sacrifice him? But Avraham did not question. Not only didn't he question out loud, in his mind and in his heart of hearts, he had no question. It was not a problem at all. God said, I'm going to have grandchildren from Yitzhak, so I will. But God also said to, to sacrifice him before he's married. So, I'll sacrifice him. But then how are you going to have grandchildren? That's not my job. God will give me grandchildren from Yitzhak after I, after I sacrifice him. But how does that work? I don't know. It's not my problem. So to Avraham, there was no problem because there was no contradiction. The contradiction exists only in human imagination. To the human being, how can you have children and be dead? But if you're talking about God, there are no contradictions. I mean, this is the same God who created men and women and then told them to get married and get along. See? To the human being, it's like, what? That's not possible. But to God, everything is possible. <laughs> so the same God who says that men and women should marry each other said you can have children from a child that you just sacrificed. To Avraham, that was not a problem. So God says to, to, to Moshe, it's too, too bad. You're not like Avraham. Avraham did not question. And then God said, watch and you will see how I take the Jews out of Egypt because the Egyptians are going to send them out, not only let them go. They're going to chase them out. And that's the end of that conversation. So just as, as an aside, does this really mean that Moshe was not as great in his faith as, as Avraham? 
at least in this detail? Because there's no question that Avraham was a, that Moshe was a much greater prophet than Avraham. Torah says there's no greater prophet than, than Moshe. But the truth is that if we understand the role, the nature, the contribution of the various great people in the Torah, Avraham's function, Avraham's mission in life was kindness. To bring divine kindness down to earth. Kindness doesn't ask questions. That is not a function of kindness. Kindness is an emotion. It's a generosity of spirit. It has no questions. Questions does not further the cause of kindness. And since his mission, his job, his function was to bring kindness to the world, there was no reason for him to ever ask a question. Moshe, on the other hand, his soul, his mission, his, his uh, presence on earth was all about bringing God's wisdom down to earth. Avraham was Chachma. I'm sorry. Moshe was Chachma. That was his function, to bring divine wisdom into the world. Well, one of the functions of Chachma, of wisdom, is to inquire and to get answers, to make sense. So Moshe was not doubting God. How could he? He's Moshe. He wasn't doubting God. You know what you're doing? That's what it sounds like, right? It's like, are you sure you know what you're doing? You send me and, and it just gets worse? No, that was not. That was There was no cynicism in his question. His question was, since my function is to bring divine wisdom to the world, how do I explain this? Not how do I have faith? Of course I have faith. But it's my job to make sense. So how do I make sense of this? Good question. So Moshe was not failing. Moshe was being true to his mission. Avraham was true to his mission. And there's no, there's no contest. It's not one is greater than the other. Each is doing the divine uh, task that their soul was given. More than given, that's what their soul was. Avraham was a walking kindness. And Moshe was a living, walking understanding. So in a sense, God was saying, you know, kindness has an advantage over wisdom because it doesn't ask. In some way, that statement was an answer to Moshe's question. It wasn't just a criticism. God actually said, what a pity the uh, virtue of kindness is gone. It was, but it's no longer. Chaval al de'avdin v'lo mishtakhin. Those were the days. Kindness. Those were, those were the good days. Now we're into wisdom. Not so good. It's the right thing. It's the perfect thing. But it's not like wisdom, but not like kindness. But that's a whole profound, complicated subject. Kindness, of course, is an emotion. 
and emotion in the heart. Wisdom is a function of the brain, part of intelligence. Which is greater, wisdom, the brain, or kindness in the heart? What's greater, knowledge or feeling? If you have divine knowledge, that's very good. You have divine feelings, very good. Which one is better? On the one hand, knowledge, when it's right and good and godly, well, isn't that what makes us human? It's our highest function. Intelligence is a higher function than emotions. What, why is that? Well, because animals have emotions, but animals don't have intelligence like a human being, so it's unique to the human being. That doesn't tell you why it's higher. And what do we mean by higher? How do you measure these things? Even when we say in God, the higher level of godliness, what is higher? Higher means closer to the original. So I come up with a brilliant idea and I can't wait to share it with others. So I find some people and I tell them with great excitement, listen to this idea, it's a great idea, and I share it with others. An act of kindness. So which function is closer to me, to the original soul that produces intelligence and emotions? That's called higher. Higher means closer to the origin. Lower means further from the origin. So now it's pretty simple. Emotions are always expressed outwardly from me to you. Intelligence just happens within me, without you. In fact, in order to really learn, in order to really understand, you got to get away from people, get a quiet place where you can think, you can, you can meditate, you can get to know the subject. So intelligence is higher because it is closer to the original, to the origin, to the soul that produced it. Once I understand it, now I can express it. I can give it away out, outside of myself to somebody else. That's certainly further from the original, further from the origin. So whatever is more essentially me is called higher. That which is outside of me, beyond me, that's called lower. We usually assume that higher is better than lower, right? If somebody asks you, do you want a high blessing or a low blessing? Well, of course you're going to ask for the higher one. But that's not so simple. The lower functions are more vital and more important to the, uh, let's say, perfection of the universe. You want to bring peace to the world? What's more important, what you're thinking or how you treat others? Obviously, how you treat others. You can sit and think peace, not going to do much good. You can even understand how important peace is doesn't do any good. You know that famous bumper sticker that says, visualize peace. Eh, okay, I got it. I visualized it. Now what? 
Oh, imagine if everybody in the world visualized peace. Yeah, and then what? Unless you express it, unless you share it, unless you feel it, you haven't changed anything. So take these two concepts and see what you come up with. One concept is God wants to come down to earth, heaven on earth. There are things that are higher and there are things that are lower. Take these two concepts together. Now ask yourself, what's better, high or low? The low. Because the whole plan is to bring God down to the lower world. So if you stay with your head in the clouds, you're not doing the job. So although intelligence is higher than emotions, emotions are more necessary for the task at hand. So God says to Moshe, what a pity that emotion of kindness is not as pronounced as it used to be. But on the other hand, It did its job and we moved on, which means we're making progress. What is the next step? After your emotions are, see, Avraham was the emotion of kindness. Yitzchak was the emotion of, of discipline. Yaakov was the emotion of compassion. Now that we've moved on, we're ready for the next step. The next step is, Get the Jews out of Egypt and bring them to Mount Sinai. And what's going to happen at Mount Sinai? We're going to take it to the next step. The step of action. We're going to be told how to serve God in action. So we have all the right ideas and we have all the right feelings. So godliness is now present in our mind and in our heart. But that's not down low enough. Now we have to bring God even into the simple acts. We eat godly, we dress godly, we work godly, everything in the world of action, which is the lowest, everything there has to become godly too. At any rate, God says, a pity that we're not, we're not in the stage of kindness anymore, because kindness has the one advantage that it doesn't ask questions. Here's a very interesting little uh, side story. How is it that Moshe was born? Moshe's parents, who had already given birth to Aaron and to Miriam, living in a time when all Jewish boys were being killed, Jewish babies, they separated because they didn't want to bring a child into this dangerous, ugly world. Miriam was about five years old at the time, and she said to her father, your decree against the Jewish people is worse than Pharaoh's decree. Pharaoh just wants to eliminate the boys. You're eliminating boys and girls by not giving birth, not having a baby. That was the punchline of her argument but they had long, heavy discussions about this until Miriam convinced her parents that they should have a baby. And who was that baby? Moshe. If you enjoyed this conversation or this topic, 
and you're looking for more information, or you want to hear it again from another angle, there is a way to do that. And that is in this book. It's all there. Order it from Amazon. You can read it, reread it, and share it. We have a Sunday night program for VIPs that you might be interested in. It's informal. It's questions and answers. It's conversation. It's really relaxed. It's really pleasant, enjoyable, informative, and uh, kind of community-like. It's a Sunday night program. There's a um, Wednesday morning program for the VIPs, and there's a Wednesday night program. All of it, just conversation, casual, laid back, unscripted. So join us, take a look, click uh, the link below and see which, which of the three suits you best and join us for some enjoyable conversation.